Thank you. Um, so good afternoon. I was thinking very presidential here. I feel like I'm going to make so I should actually, with the reward, I should just sort of start with the, you know, let's make reward great again and sort of like get that really going. Um, but I want to focus today really about uh, BCOM. Um, we believe that happiness is the best driver for success, and that obviously relates to the employees and obviously making your people happy. Um, we believe it's with obviously a clear direction, understanding that corporate <laughs> vision, the alignment, knowing your role within the organisation, and then motivating, understanding how you're going to be paid. So it's about that journey, really, and how technology plays a part in that journey, achieving that employee value in compensation and seeing what they see. So I'm going to take you through very high level. You're probably going to see things that you've, you know, you've probably heard today in different formats, but I think it's very good to focus on the key objectives that it, wherever you are in this stage of journey and your transformation, um, try and focus on the key elements all the way through there, and obviously when you get to the end, it will all be beneficial for you. Um, in the next slide. So really the changing needs of the employers, and I think there's been, I've seen lots of sessions here today which has talked about the different changing needs, how the workforce has changed, one just had about now about the gig economy and people changing. So you really need to understand what's that demographic of your workforce. You know, promote your values. Uh, we have a great story on our website which is about the JFK and the janitor, which is, I think you've probably, a lot of you might have heard of it, but if you haven't, it's where JFK goes to NASA and, you know, he's doing his tour and he comes across the janitor and he obviously says, you know, what you're here for, and he's you know, I'm, you know, helping put a man on the moon. So the guy understands his values. I take it a little bit further and say that I think nowadays you really need to be starting taking feedback from that employee because not only is he part of a value or part of a bigger thing, but also take feedback of where he can help. You know, did anybody ask the janitor, could he make a difference? You know, ideas, where did he see things? Because he sees things from a different perspective. So really understanding the culture match the requirements, the flexibility, the opportunity, the way we've changed, the way that people are working, hours, etc. The reward. I think rewards are very key, obviously, today from this session. But it's not just about salary. It's the whole package. You'll see out there and uh, all the people who are here, a lot of the sponsors, different packages about well-being, packages that you can offer, different solutions to answer really the same problem. But it's about focusing back to that what's the demographic and using the right one. I mean, a big one is the life stage benefits. You know, if you're just starting out at work, um, you know, you really want to be, do you really want to focus on life assurance? Is that a key thing at the part? But, you know, how much more can you promote about pensions? So really starting to think about how you put that together and the messaging and, and putting value around what you're actually providing. And the fairness is very big now, especially gender pay, what we can provide, the, the balance of what you're paying, and everything's fair. And it's an information age. If we look at the, you know, past 10, 20 years, the, the growth of technology has been phenomenal. Um, you know, if you think back the iPhone, you've probably all got a phone or a smartphone, which is full of apps, and 10 years ago that didn't even exist. So the, the, the transformation over that period of time has been huge. And today's employees, especially, you know, the millennial age coming through, it's all about real time. It's multi-visual. You've got to think of the different channels, how you can access that information, mobile technology. We're all connected. You know, while you're talking, I'm standing here talking, you could probably check your emails. So it's about that user experience of making it engaging. So that's the change in needs. So it, nothing new. So again, I think it's personalization and segmentation. These are two things that always come up. Should I be personalizing? Should I be segmenting? And I think they're really fundamental from both. They're sort of joined so personalization, I think, is very key. You've got to be very personal in what you do because I think even in your own life, whatever you receive, if it hasn't got personal to you, you don't really take any notice of it. It's got to really relate to the culture, the culture and the environment that you're in. Not only the culture, but the location. So it, if you're pushing certain bits of information, make sure that's relevant and local so people start to engage more with that technology. And the information you're providing is very key and personal to that person. But a lot of that is only going to happen if you do your segmentation properly. That's working on key groups. So segmentation is not just about working out who's the high achievers, who, you know, top talent. It's about working out, you know, who's the new starters? Who's actually joined you within the past 30 days? You know, there's a simple segmentation that you can start pushing different messages to. If we take the other end of the, the reward spectrum, you know, coming towards retirement, 
Who's five years from the end of retirement? Start to segment those people. You can start to put different messages to these people. So it's really starting to use the personalization and segment, segmentation together. But again, from a security perspective in today's, it's all about data. And I've seen a lot of presentations where you know, you've got all the HR data to create and let's put some personal data together. We have to be very careful about how you do that. Because um, obviously the security, the data risks, all these things and the compliance is very key. So I want to move on to technology. Ensuring your pay and performance incentive program is obviously backed up by an aligned technology platform. Um, I want to take you sort of back in time slightly, sort of 10, 15 years, um, to probably, you know, looking by the age of some people in the room, they'll probably remember this like I do, and some probably don't remember it. <laughs> um, technology was different. Uh, you would, let's talk about in general from a bigger picture. Within compensation technology, we're part of this bigger ecosystem which is called HR technology. So it used to be on premise, we used to have all this ability to go in and we used to put the systems in and then we would put your processes in and configure it and it would all work and it would be fantastic. Um, and it was about consolidation, increasing that self service, streamlining the processes. And you know, the global processes, particularly around compensation, simplifying it, working it to your job levels, job grades, making sure everything was consistent, all within a single package, all global, all can, you know, regardless of where it was. And then from an IT requirements, it was one platform, there was less to do, it was all data driven, and it could start to be more compliant. So if I just take you through a few examples, and you're probably lots of different organizations in here, you're probably all different stages of HR transformation. You've probably been through it, and you're at the end, or you're at the start of it. The old HR IT landscape probably looked like this. There was a lot of on-premise solutions, different HR data sources, lots of different payrolls globally, all around probably one or two intranets, could have grown by acquisition, different compensation packages, Excel spreadsheets, all merged together. So some was compliant, some weren't. So this big transformation, what happened sort of like about 10 years ago, was this transformation. Let's move towards this big cloud. We're gonna have this big cloud, IT comes in, so we're gonna have one solution. It's gonna do everything that you need it to do, and it's gonna include all your talent, your recruiting, compensation, payroll, learning, all the things is all gonna be there. It's gonna be simple, we can then plug our benefits in, we can do our HR policies, it's all gonna be compliant, and we can all access it, and it's gonna make life a lot easier. But if we focus on compensation, I'm not gonna read this, it's one of them slides you put up that's got a lot of information on. Um, this is compensation. These are the complexities. These are the things that you need to do on a daily basis. And because the way that the, the cloud technology is actually built, it's not designed like the old on-premise to actually make you the ability to customize to your processes. It will go a certain amount, but a lot of people then started to struggle. How do I do this? How do I do that? I can't do it with this technology because it won't let me. It's built for a multi-tenant environment where everybody has to be on the same version. It's not working for me as a company. I can get 75%, but what about the 25%, which is always the hardest bit? And that's just shown in this picture here. It's that capability, the local requirements. It's not limited to compensation, you know, with the LTI and the deferred bonuses and those great things. But again, in payroll, it's exactly the same. And in recruitment and onboarding, you're going to have the same sort of issues. How do you bring all this together? All that non-complexity, the compliance and everything sort of starts to break down. So what they did in the transformation wasn't bad. It was just about how do we take it to the next level? Where do we need to go? Um, and that's really the acceptance that one size doesn't fit all. So, you know, SaaS is a, great, is a great way to put technology in and move it forward and always be on the latest version, but it needs to be a combination of best of breed. You need applications like the global HRS systems that can give you those global processes that are very simple to do processes like the talent, the reviews, which you can do on a global scale. But then you need the solutions like the global payroll. You need the recruiting, onboarding, and compensation, which is obviously the field that we play in, that really brings together this compliant global solution that really helps you start to transform your organization and make it more efficient, which is the key part. So actually, once you've got a system, you've got a compensation system, how do you set it up? What's the key things that you need to look for or you need to ensure that you do to make sure it's going to be aligned to what you're trying to achieve, which is what we talk about, taking back and making your people happy, make them understand. It's, it's really about these four pillars. It's the organization, the rules, the simulation, and then the analysis. How do you actually view all this information? 
So if I take to, together from this end-to-end -end plan management, the organisation, I think the key things you've got to be able to do is create, and it goes back to this segmentation part, can you create the multiple hierarchies? Can you really start to put those in place? Can you start to dissect them? Can you start to split people up in business units? And then when you're in certain, the, the bigger you get, you're going to get people across different, uh, different geographies, different regions, different business units. How do people move across those hierarchies? What's their use as the roles? How can you track them across these? So you need to be able to take all that data from your core system. So if you've built onto the cloud, get that data in there, but have the ability to manipulate it, utilize it in your compensation package, but not affect the corporate structure of your organization. So it's that flexibility in the framework that we talk about. That's the key things you need to really concentrate in building your groups of people to, so you can really start to segment and put the right reward packages together. So within the actual rules, this is a key part that we think. It's the rules engine. You've got all this data. You've got to import market data. You've got to import all the key performance metrics. You've got to get some database information. Got, everything's got to come into this calculation engine. And you've also got to take into account the clawbacks, the schedule, and the mobility. You've got to be able to edit the rules directly in there. You don't want to be in the situation like in that second slide where, OK, well, I've got this global system now. But now in my compensation, what I really have to do is download it into an Excel spreadsheet, manipulate the data, put it back into there. And then, obviously, there's an error. I can't simulate it. So then I have to go and back in and then download it again. And it doesn't work. And then you can't work out because there's no audit trail. So I can't see who changed what. So you've got to have that ability to really go in there. And I think the copy and paste is key as well. If, you've got, if you start to segment your workforce and you start to put together these different areas and different groups of people, then a lot of the times the, the rules and things might be 75% the same, 75 the same, 25% needs to change. So you've got that ability just to copy and paste it and then just change the rules for the different segmentation so you can start to build unlimited things. We, you know, a lot of the clients that we talk to, they, they can each segment and sometimes go down to even groups of one because they, certain people are exceptional that they need to really identify and focus on. But uh, they can do that very easily because they can actually take a lot of what's been done before and just copy and paste and create rules and create scenarios for these people. I think simulation is very key. I think in today's uh, workforce, you need to be able to really go into it and understand it. How do you look at these different plans? We've all got this period of time at the beginning of the year, that, or regard, you know, when it is in the year, that says, right, how do I look at my compensation? What do I need to do now? What if this? What can I do that? What's the benchmarking? How can I really display to people I understand where they sit and show them what, what their journey has been? And I think we've got a lot of what-if analysis that being, being, give the ability for people to actually drill in and say, right, what if, you know, if I overachieve, how's that going to affect my compensation? So this simulation is not just about the plans, but giving people the visibility if they go over and above and achieve, showing what they can actually do. From an analysis perspective, this is really about the key thing. You've got to be able to look at the data at the end. It's a single source of the data. You've got to be able to look in and see where the changes have actually been made. Who's made the changes? Where's the errors happened? You know, what's gone wrong? What's gone right? Document management is key. You know, certain markets that you're operating in, you'll appreciate that you have to print documents sometimes, or you have to be delivering certain types of documents, or certain legal regulations that you have to put in. People have to sign for these things. So can you get the right delivery mechanism? Can you incorporate a solution that will actually incorporate something like DocuSign, where you can go in you can then monitor and you can see who's gone in, who's signed, who hasn't. So it gives that ability to really get that central control, but then also give the people local access. And what I mean by that, it may be by business unit, it could be by geography. So giving the people the ability at that local level to go and get that key local information. If I look at this from the different type of user perspectives, I think we, we split it down into three. You've got the employee, the manager, and the administrator. Um, from the employee perspective, um, it's really got to be, it's about when you're displaying compensation data into employee, it's not just about putting on a screen, here's a nice little pie chart, and here's, you know, look at this green bit, and this is your basic pay, and here's a bonus on top, and here's your total rewards, you know, this is your insurance policy. It's displaying that, but it's then the ability to actually drill into that for information. So my bonus, how is that made up? What were my KPIs? How can I see 
how I performed. What was it that really made that up? If you're an executive or you've got some long-term incentives, can I drill into that information to see my vesting schedule to say, right, okay, I've got some of these deferred. I can see where this is going to come to me in cash. I can now start to see where my whole... Um, uh, five minutes, I'm just seeing <laughs> See where I'm going, I can see. And also, even we can start to portray charts. You, you, there's lots of things you can do. We've had some clients who've actually gone in from an employee level and actually shown them where they sit against the market average on their salary. So they can see that you know, they're being rewarded well for what they're doing. Um, you can start to show people's journey. So it's about presenting the right data that really reflects back to your employee levels. The manager. The manager, again, needs to be able to go in and see the team. But again, it depends on the level of the manager. You've got to have that ability to start to slice. And this is where, again, the hierarchies come in, because as a manager, you're going to have probably different hierarchies within your team. You want to be able to compare. So again, especially in regions, if you're a manager that runs, say, for example, a France and a UK, how are the two comparing? Where are my gaps? Where can I see I can actually improve over next year? Really around the reward packages. So that's what you're not to look at. And then from an administrator, um, we like to sort of say this is the, almost like the, the godlike access that you need to all the information, all within this one single point of data. So I think that's key. You've got to be able to look at everything within one application. App. Do we need an app? I've seen lots of different things, and there's lots of different sessions where we've got this app, that app. I think an app is nice to have. I can create an app in five seconds on my phone. I can just get a URL click a button on there that says create a link and it will create a nice little picture that I can put on my phone. So I can look at it, click it, and it automatically opens. As long as the application you're running has responsive design, it will work well. Apps, nice to have if you can do something good. But from an IT perspective, it starts to add complexity because when, I don't know if you I'll take the Apple example, you create an app in Apple, it's going to do less functionality than your normal system will do. But then when the actual system starts to get upgraded, you then have to submit that to a different Apple team who will then decide that and test that and do that. So you're on two different releases then. It starts to create different ecosystems. So yes, they're nice to have if you don't have to maintain them. But if you're looking for a big core across the board platform, be more responsive design. Don't worry too much about the app. I want to finish uh, a bit on artificial intelligence. Uh, and it's a big buzzword. Everybody talks about it. Everybody seems to be talking about artificial intelligence. And I think I caught the end of the session that was earlier. Uh, and, and a lot of this already exists. You know, within our application, the automation of tasks for these manual actions, it already exists. A lot of this artificial intelligence and the compensation management we can do already today. The machine learning is where it's really starting to get more in touch. It's that recognizing the patterns, predicting performance, explaining the drivers. This is where the key benefits are really going to be driven in the future. Again, the business case. I think I uh, heard the end of the session again. Chatbots, quite big. Uh, there's some quite intelligent chatbots out there where some of the websites you've probably been to and it comes up, do you want to chat to someone? It's not a real person. They're just trying to establish what your need is, what you're trying before they actually take that level. So again, you can start to do dispute management. So they exist now. Cost reduction, that really helps in the communication so it can really start to play an advantage really towards where your employees are actually going, what their sentiments are. And this really plays back to that talent retention and engagement. So you can understand more. And, and the language and the way it can actually interpret the language of what people are saying and interpret that to how they're feeling really starts to play an intelligent about the learning. And this is just, I want to finish just on a quick one as an example. This is machine learned empowered uh, simulation everywhere uh, for what we really talk about. And it, it's not rocket science. It's really about recognizing patterns. It's gaining that understanding. So it's really going through the, you know, this is one that's about current age, salary, modeling. It's really about prediction from the future, and that's based on the um, alternatives, et cetera, and the solutioning. What do you need to do? What do you need to change? What's the data coming out? So really looking in, analyzing it. But I'll, there's a word of warning on artificial intelligence. It's only as good as the data that's put into it. So if you start asking it questions where it hasn't got the data, it can't answer them because it's only relying on the information it knows. So again, the more information you can put into there, the more intelligent the answer will come out. So 
Do you need a separate artificial intelligence within compensation? Probably at a certain level, but that needs to be plugged into a wider business um, reporting level, uh, playing a part. So they're both as equal as each other. Um, I know I've probably hit the 20 minutes. So again, we're out there. Uh, a lot of people trust us with their compensation. So if you've got any questions or want to know anything, hopefully it's been useful today. Um, please come and see us if you want to know any questions.